Well, it's great to see all of you at New Hope Christian Church today. It's so good to gather together this Christmas season and worship our Lord, and we're so thankful that you're a part of our worship time today. I want to remind you today of our Christmas Eve services, which are coming Sunday, uh, December 23rd at 10 a.m., and then Monday, uh, December 24, 5 p.m. I hope that you'll plan to be at at least one of those services. Bring your friends. It's going to be a great time together, a candlelight service. In your bulletin today, you have two little cards that look like this. purpose of these cards is for you to take them, give them out to friends, would you? Invite them to uh, Christmas Eve services, and that, that would just uh, be great. Also want to remind you of the Christmas Lunch Bunch, which is this Tuesday. It's, uh, it's at the Parsonage at 11.30. Hope you'll plan to come. There's a sign-up sheet in the back of the auditorium for you to sign up for Lunch Bunch. Be sure to sign up and plan to come on over and have a great time with us. In your bulletin is our communication card. Take that communication card at this time, would you? Fill it out and place it in the offering plate at a later time in our service. Put any prayer request that you might have on that communication card as well as uh, any communication that you might need to get to us here at the church. We appreciate your help in that way. I suspect that you are a lot like me and you love Christmas music. I love singing that song, Silent Night. I love singing Joy to the World. I love singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I even love singing Jingle Bells, all right? I love Christmas music, and I don't mind telling you that when December 26 comes, I sort of uh, dread that day because it's sort of the end, you know, of Christmas music. It likes It goes for a month, and then it ends. A few years ago... I had the distinct privilege to stand in Obendorf, Austria. Obendorf, Austria is the place where Silent Night was very close to the place where it was written, and, and it was the place that it was performed for the very first time. Joseph Moore was the man who wrote the words, and Franz Gruber wrote the music. And I was able to visit there and to visit that shrine and. Boy, what a night that was. I still remember standing there and you could go with earphones and you could listen to Silent Night in all different kinds of languages. It was just amazing. It's probably the most popular Christmas song in all the world. Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm, All is Bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in Heavenly peace, silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven above, uh, heavenly hosts sing alleluia, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born, silent night, holy night, son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. That very first Christmas was filled with music. And probably the first Christmas song was the song of the angels. We're going to consider that song on Christmas Eve. But one of the very first Christmas songs was a song written by Mary. That song happens to be found in the book of Luke, the first chapter, verse 46, if you'll turn there. Luke 1, verse 46, and that's our scripture text this morning. Luke 1, starting with verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For now on all generations... We will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with His arms. He has scattered those who are proud 
in their uh, innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned to her home. When we look at this song written by Mary so many years ago, the very first thing that we notice is that God is glorified through Jesus. I want to remind you this Christmas season that Jesus remembers you. He never forgets you. When we look at this birth of Jesus Christ, listen, it was not a convenient time for Mary or for Joseph. Instead, it is very clear in the scripture that it was a confusing, complicated, this was a constraining birth for Mary. But God remembered her. He never forgot her. And Jesus always remembers you. And he never forgets you. He is always there. He remembers with mercy those who are humble. And Mary takes time to glorify the Lord because she knows that God remembered her in the most difficult of days. You can know that Jesus remembers the humble who follow him. And it doesn't matter how tough or difficult your days become. God always remembers you. Mary was so confident of that because she knew the word of God and she knew the word of God well. As a matter of fact, if we turn back to the words of Hannah, Hannah wrote a song and sang a song in the Old Testament. And it's very similar to this song here sung by Mary Mary knew the word of God, and when Mary wrote this song, no doubt she was thinking of the book of Psalms. In Psalm 113, verse 3, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised, and Mary takes time to praise God. In Psalm 126, verse 3, The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with great joy. And Mary experienced that great joy that comes straight from God. In Psalm 31, verses 14 and 15, But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Mary trusted the Lord, and God knows Mary's heart. Mary makes it clear that it is Jesus who is the Lord, and He praises her, and when He or she praises Him, and when she praises Him, she praises Him in a sincere and transparent way. This past week, we were watching television. And while we were watching television, we saw a TV commercial. Aren't TV commercials some of the funniest things in all the world, you know? We were watching a TV commercial, and this was a TV commercial about clear choice dental implants. Here's what happened. A lady said that she was brought to virtual tears because her dentures fell out. Now, I'll tell you something, that's a bad time, but to say it's virtual tears, it's not a very good choice of words. You see, when you say it's virtual tears, listen, what you're saying is it's not real tears. Instead, they are fake tears. That's not the case with Mary in this scripture text. Instead, Mary, she cries tears and she sings a beautiful song to her God, but She understands that however great or how much you give thanks to God, you can never thank Him enough. And that's why she just thanks Him over and over again and praises God over and over again. Several years ago, Andrea Crouch took the song, some of the famous words of the song from Fanny Crosby, To God Be the Glory. Now, I'll tell you about Fanny Crosby on 
February, the last Sunday of February, Betty Gray is going to be with us here at the church again. When she's here this year on that Sunday, she's going to portray that wonderful songwriter, Fanny Crosby. You won't want to miss that. You'll want to make your plans to be here for that and bring your friends. But to God be the glory. How can I say thanks for the things he has done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the great things he has done with his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory. For the great things he has done, just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. Should I give any, gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With his blood he has saved me. With his power he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Listen this morning, that is exactly the prayer of Mary. And that is our prayer, and that is our song. Just let me live my life in a way that is pleasing, Lord, unto you. And the birth of Jesus Christ points to Calvary. And may all of my life point to Calvary. And remember that Mary was there at the cross. There's a second lesson in this song. God is our Savior because of Jesus. This song clearly speaks of the grace and the mercy of God. God saved Mary through Jesus Christ, which indicates that Mary was a sinner Saved by grace. She was just like you and she was just like me. And she trusted the Lord for her eternal salvation. Mary had an immediate need. Mary was a virgin. She was bearing the Son of God, Jesus. The Messiah would be her Savior from day number one of his birth. And the Messiah is our Savior. And God could have chosen any woman in Jerusalem, but He didn't. Instead, God perfectly chose Mary, and God perfectly chose Joseph from the region of Nazareth, a group of rejected people, a little town of Bethlehem, a small place, and from the very beginning, God shows His grace and His mercy to Mary who trusted Him. And Mary makes it clear, God is holy. And thus Mary could live a committed and holy life following her son Jesus. And she realized that it was her son who was the mighty one. And He would work on her her behalf, and Mary could cry out in song for the great things he has done. And Mary believed God, yielded her life to God. God had performed a great miracle in Mary's life. She was a virgin who was going to give birth to the Messiah. What a miracle it was. And that is what God has always done when we look at the birth of Jesus Christ God is at work then and God is still at work performing his miracles today and God will perform his miracles tomorrow and all of it points to the eventual return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the end. And we trust Jesus for our salvation. 
And that salvation is to spread from generation to generation. And then there's a third lesson in this song. God performs mighty deeds through Jesus. There's something special about this salvation in this song. Mary makes it clear that salvation is for all of us. We have received His mercy. We have experienced His grace. And we know all about the help that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And Mary very carefully names three specific groups to whom God has called Jesus, called Him to be merciful. She mentions the helpless and the humble and the hungry. Mary says, Jesus lifts up the helpless. Salvation also implies judgment. Mary makes it clear in this song that there will be those who are enemies of God who will be scattered abroad. And the thrones of this earth will be overthrown because of the power of God. But it's God through Jesus who is there to meet the need of those who are helpless. On our own, we are all helpless and we need a Savior. And Jesus came to earth to be that Savior. And that's what the birth of Jesus Christ is all about. And salvation is for all people everywhere and it's through Christ that we are saved it's through Christ that we are shown mercy and grace for salvation and salvation is for all people everywhere that's why we have those Christmas Eve services you see we know that more people will come to church on Christmas Eve than any other time of the year we just know that there are people right now thinking about where they're going to go to church on Christmas Eve. They don't know where they're going to go, but they know they're going to go somewhere. If you take the time to ask them, they'll come to New Hope Christian Church. I hope you'll take that time. And that's why this year we're having two services. One on Sunday, January 23rd, 10 a.m. You invite your friends to come to that candlelight Christmas Eve service or Monday January 24 5 p.m. we make it very convenient for people to come and you take these little handouts would you and you give them to your friends because salvation is for everyone that's why we do this to reach out to people with the message of the Lord Jesus Christ those who are helpless Mary sings, Jesus lifts up the humble. Mary is such a beautiful model of humility. Christianity is the death of pride. And the birth of Christ and the death of Jesus Christ on the cross is the end of pride. And you think about that birth of Jesus, it occurred in a stable, in a cave. It was the home place of the animals. It was a dark place. It was a dirty place. And Jesus is born in that kind of place. That's the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus reaches out to those who are humble. And the whole life of Jesus, from beginning to end on the cross, points to humility. And then Jesus lifts up the needy. There's so much about Christ, Christmas that is about giving. And by the way, I don't think that's a bad thing. As a matter of fact, I think it's a good thing that we give. I understand that we can get carried away and we can give too much at Christmas. Let me tell you, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, we've almost forgotten about this, but it was all connected to Christmas. That's why we took time this year to wrap the Operation Christmas Child boxes and to stuff those boxes. Because Christmas is all about giving. And we were able to send out 
250 boxes, and those boxes are on their way to places around the world. In this Christmas season, Christmas at New Hope is all about giving. We're asking you to give a very special gift. We'll have envelopes in the bulletin next Sunday. You've already seen that envelope in your church paper. We're asking you to give a very special offering this Christmas for IDES, for International Disaster Emergency Service, and that money will go 100% to help those people in the panhandle who are facing such a difficult time this Christmas. It's all about giving. This is an, our opportunity to make a difference. There's no question that the greatest Christmas story in all of history is the story of the birth of Jesus. But the story right after that is probably Charles Dickens' The Christmas Carol. The first edition of The Christmas Carol was published December 19th, and the first copy was sold on Christmas Eve. And Ebenezer Scrooge in that story is visited by the spirit of Christmas past, present, and future. And after those visits, something happens to Scrooge. He is awakened. Life is changed, and he becomes a kinder and gentler kind of person. He's a model of reaching out to the helpless and making life easier for other people. He becomes a model of humility by meeting the needs of the Cratchit family. And he lifts up the needy like Tiny Tim. That song of Mary so many years ago reminds us that all of us are helpless without Jesus. The song of Mary reminds us of our humble estate as we preach a great and glorious God. And that song of Mary reminds us that Jesus provides hope for the needy. And each of us can experience that hope through the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Oh, Lord God, how we praise your holy name. How we thank you this morning for Jesus. For the great things that you have done through Jesus. For his birth. And the very fact that you reach out through Jesus to meet the need of those who have so many great needs. And you reach out to the humble. And you reach out to make a difference in our world. God, you bless us so much. And we praise your name. We thank you for this song of Mary that we can praise and we can rejoice because of the coming of your son Jesus so many years ago, it's in his name that we pray, amen. I'm going to invite our music team to come today and lead us in a song, if they would, at this time. Let me ask you, do you have a decision to make for Jesus this Christmas? Be a perfect Christmas gift to God, to give your heart, to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You come, would you make a decision for Christ as we stand and as we sing together?